We're going to take a look today at OneDrive by Microsoft. And this is a service that used to be called SkyDrive. I find it to be a very convenient, useful service. As it says here, it's one place for everything in your life. It's meant to be a way for you to store and easily share the documents, photos, and just about anything else that you use. And these are stored in the cloud. In many ways, it's similar to Dropbox or Google Drive. And Microsoft has put together a comparison for us to see how these different services compare to each other. As you can see, OneDrive gives you a good amount to start with of storage. And if you want to pay for additional storage, it's cheaper really than the alternatives. Those of you that use Dropbox may be thinking, well yeah, you start with just 2 gigabytes in, in Dropbox, but if you recommend Dropbox to a friend, you very quickly can get more storage. And that's true. Microsoft's OneDrive, though, has the same option. If you recommend OneDrive to friends and they accept, you get bonus storage and so do your friends. If you've been a Windows SkyDrive user in the past, you can simply click sign in to sign into what used to be your SkyDrive account and you will basically activate your OneDrive account. If you've never used Windows SkyDrive or OneDrive, you can click the sign up button, log in with your Microsoft account if you have one. That could be a Hotmail account, it could be MSN, it could be a Windows Live account, any Microsoft account and password. If you don't have any kind of a Microsoft account, that's okay. You can click this link to sign up for a Microsoft account, which will then also give you access to Microsoft OneDrive. I do already have a Microsoft account, so I'm go going to simply click and sign in. And since this is my computer, I'll check this box to keep me signed in. And this takes me to my OneDrive storage space. All my files and folders that I had in my Windows SkyDrive account are still here. And notice with the new Windows OneDrive, as they call it now, with three steps you can get a lot more storage. You could back up your photos automatically if you have a smartphone with a camera. You can opt into that and get an additional three gigabytes of storage. Next, they want you to sync from your PC or Mac, and I'll show you how to do that in just a minute. And then step three, you can refer friends to use OneDrive. If enough of them accept, you can get up to five more gigabytes of storage. I'll click get started. So now that I'm signed in or signed up for Microsoft's OneDrive, you'll see that I have different folders that I've set up with documents, pictures, different things that I want stored in the cloud and I want access to them on any device, anywhere that I am. And now on any computer in the world, I could go to OneDrive.com, sign in, and I would have access to these materials. For example, this photo I can access wherever I want. When I select the photo, it gives me some options for sharing that photo. I could set up a link for people to click to get this photo to be able to access it. Or I could share the photo to specific people by typing in their email address here. I could add a quick note and click share. Notice that I can set it that these documents or photos uh, are only viewable or they could be editable. I can also set it so that the viewers don't need to have a Microsoft account to see the photos or documents or I could force them to have to have a Microsoft account in order to access these things and I could just click share. If I need to I can download any of these documents that I might need. I can simply go into these folders and select a document that I need to download and very often you'll see a download button toward the top that you can click to download the document. Now one of the other great things about OneDrive is that not only can you upload documents so that you can access them wherever, but you can actually create documents. In this way it's somewhat similar to Google Drive. I can go up to the top and click create and of course I can create folders to store and organize my my documents into but I can also create a Word document, an Excel spreadsheet or workbook, a PowerPoint presentation, and all of these other things, even an Excel survey. And I can create them here in the cloud on my OneDrive. Now those of you that use Google Drive are thinking, oh yeah, we've been able to do that for years with Google Drive, and that's true. But the difference is that these are Word documents. They are PowerPoint presentations. They're not, they're not imitations of PowerPoint presentations or imitations of Word documents. And there's just something to be said for creating a Word document using 
a Windows product instead of making a Word document using a Google Drive service or you know some other alternative to the Microsoft products. So I could click as an example PowerPoint presentation and it takes me to what looks like a limited version of Microsoft's PowerPoint. I can click to add title, I can click to add subtitle. You know, they very much tried to make this similar to the real Microsoft Office. I can add multiple slides. I can insert pictures, clip art, shapes. I can put in some limited transitions and animations. When I'm done, I can actually present from the web without having the actual Microsoft PowerPoint program installed on this computer. I could click View, Slideshow to start the presentation. When I'm done, I can click File, and there is a Save As option that allows you to download this PowerPoint presentation to your computer, at which point it, could, it would open right into PowerPoint. It's uh, recognized as a full, regular PowerPoint. So that's one of the really nice things about Windows OneDrive. I'm going to X out of my wonderful presentation, and I want to show you now how to set up syncing with Microsoft OneDrive, because if all OneDrive did was allow me to upload and access my documents and videos and pictures wherever I am, and also to allow me to create documents in the cloud like PowerPoint, Excel, Word documents, I would be pretty happy. That would be pretty cool. But OneDrive does more than that. It allows you to automatically sync between devices so that files that I want to sync will be on my phone. It will, they will be on all my computers. They will be on my tablets that I have and any other devices that I want them to appear on. So let's take a look at how to set that up. In the lower left corner you'll notice that there's a link that says get OneDrive apps. I'm gonna click that. It takes me back to the front page of OneDrive. So let's take a look at how to install OneDrive on a Windows 7 machine and this would work pretty similarly on Windows 8 or in older versions of Windows. Going to the downloads page I would just select the version of Windows that's appropriate for my own computer and click download OneDrive for Windows. I'll save it to my computer, find the download and double click on it and click OK. I need to verify that I want to run the installer and give OneDrive permission to install on my computer. This will install OneDrive and after a few moments, it takes you to this screen where you can get started. I'll sign in to my Microsoft account. Notice where it's going to put my OneDrive files. If you want to change that, you can. I'll just click Next. And then I have two options to choose from. I can have it sync all my files and folders that are in my OneDrive onto this computer, or I can only choose specific files and folders to sync. This is an important choice. I'm going to stick with this. All the files in my OneDrive will be put onto this machine. But just keep in mind, if you choose to do this like I am, it will take up more space on your computer. So some people choose only specific folders to sync to a particular computer. I'll click Next. And next I have a, an interesting option. If I leave this checked, if I realize later that I wish I would have put something in my OneDrive folder, but I forgot to do so, if I leave this checked, I will be able to pull files from this computer anyway and access them on my other devices through OneDrive. You can see now what it's done. It's added OneDrive down here to the notification area, what they used to call the system tray. And it also opened a window so that I can see what's in my OneDrive. I'm going to close that and I'll, in fact I'll close out of all of these things and I'll just give you a sense of how OneDrive will work for me from now on. Let's say I turn off my computer, I come back tomorrow, and I want to access files and folders that are in my OneDrive. All I have to do is go down to the notification area and click on this Show Hidden Icons button, and there is the OneDrive icon. And I could just click on it and go from there. But I use OneDrive enough that I don't want it to be hidden. I want it to show up here in the notification area without having to click. So I'll click Customize. And notice if I browse down the page here, it shows all the things in my notification area. And I can select the Microsoft OneDrive to show. And I'll click OK. So now OneDrive is not hidden. It's always going to be visible there for me in the notification area. And that's what I want. So anytime in the future when I need to access this, all I have to do is click on it 
and click open your OneDrive folder and it pulls up my OneDrive folder. I could drag anything I want into there and it would be synced to all my devices that have OneDrive installed, whether that's a tablet, a PC, a Mac, a smartphone, really just about any device. Also notice that OneDrive has been automatically added to my favorites. So anytime I'm in Windows Explorer, I can access the OneDrive very, very easily and quickly. So I hope that you'll check out OneDrive and get a lot of use out of it. I've found it to be a very useful service. So if I go ahead and install OneDrive or SkyDrive on my phone, on my tablets, they will all be linked and synced together with the documents that I put into that SkyDrive or OneDrive folder. Those of you that are Google Drive users or Dropbox users, I would recommend that you not ignore OneDrive. It is a great service and there's no reason to limit yourself just to Dropbox if you're a Dropbox user. Use OneDrive as well. I hope that you'll subscribe to my channel, please do, and you'll be able to learn about other educational technologies and watch more of my tutorials.